Hi, this is Mike Camp, Peace in the Abbey Road Institute in Paris, France. My dad was a violinist and he basically decided to do, to be an engineer. I remember driving in a car with him, he was taking me to school and I was a huge Black Sabbath fan. That's like my, my first, like my first band, you know, getting the first Black Sabbath album was like, that's an incredible experience. But um, we're driving in a car, driving to school and he had uh, classical music on. And I was like, I'm like, what's this? What's this? He's like, it's classical. I go, oh, you put, put, put it in like Black Sabbath or put it on rock. And he goes, if you want to be a great musician, you have to listen to everything. Listen to classical music, listen to everything. I took, you know, I took guitar lessons from a jazz teacher. And, um, you know, the, I was bringing in Black Sabbath songs, Dio, Ozzy. He was showing me how to play them. And he would show me jazz chords. Like, he would show me like, you know, the chord number one, major seven chords and theory stuff and all the scales, which was incredible because, you know, I was bringing in the stuff I liked, the music, and he would like show me like all the jazz kind of stuff. And, and my brother was a huge, like he's into Aldi Miola and all the uh, Chick Corea music. So I'd be in a room practicing for hours and hours and he would knock on my door and go, oh, check this guy out. Listen to that kind of music, you know, just helped a lot with just opening your, my mind up. Going to MI really helped in Hollywood because, um, you know, we had like fusion classes. We had all these amazing teachers that were fusion players. And so basically I, learning all the jazz concepts and I love distortion and bending notes. So it's like, you know, the influence of the classical stuff and the influence of the jazz improv and the fusion. So I kind of mix it together. So now I kind of do, um, you know, I'm all, yeah, you know, my, my souls would be uh, playing over changes. Being open is the most important thing for a musician. Being a composer is just as just as important to as a guitar player because a guitar player, that by itself is not enough. It's just a guitar player. But to write my own music and have expression from my heart to come out in the music is that's ultimate. But I always wrote music from the very beginning. I always like had ideas, but not everybody has that kind of thing. So I'm grateful for that. The uh, Trans-Siberian Orchestra is, uh, is an amazing band. They call me down to New York City and I audition and Paul O'Neill and Bob Kinkle, which are the main guys, the, they're the, the writer and Paul O'Neill is like the creator of the, of the band. So I auditioned, um, and they were really excited and like, and they're just like, you know, Paul was like, wow, we, we auditioned like 500 guitar players and they're great. And it's an amazing band. I mean, it's like the, the rehearsing and like everything. So it's just top notch musicians and just his vision of the band is incredible with the, the you know, the lives and stuff. And so, yeah, that was a, a, it's a great experience. And I love backing up artists, but I love doing my own music. I love writing and that kind of thing. So, I, you know, I do, I do both, but I've been doing a lot of my solo stuff for a long time and just putting out albums and CDs. And, you know, I was always in bands that, um, you know, we toured with, you know, bands and as collaborations, as bands, we wrote music. It's great, but it's, it's also, it can be limiting because if you, you know, the band breaks up or something, then, you know, who has the songs? It's like, yeah, you write this part that, that I left, left the band. I was on my own, you know, and then we got, got some musicians together, like musicians started contacting me. Then I went to the studio by, like, by, just by myself and I recorded an album called Total Freedom, which is my very first solo album, so, which is a collection of some live solo pieces. From that point on, like I, the first solo album wasn't really a, a, a full band. It was just me by myself just going to the studio like that. I decided to sing, you know, I'm not incredible. I'm, I'm a guitarist that sings. I'm not like, you know, so I... It's my expression, like, uh, that's why I do it, like, because for expression, it's like, if I'm going to write the music, and if it's about something about the part of my life, I'm going to sing about it. Yeah, I love being in control of the, of my, my music. I mean, it wasn't enough for me just to be a sideman. I love, it's fun to do that. Like, I, I still do that. I'll, you know, I'll do other things and other projects with people. It's great, you know, but, you know, nothing like, playing your own music for people and like that. Jason Becker and Marty Friedman came to MI when I was a kid 
needed a clinic. And this is before Jason had uh, Lou Gehrig's disease. And um, seeing those two guys was amazing. It's like, you know, Jason Becker was flawless. Like, this the way, this the way of sweeping, and he was a really funny guy and stuff. That was when I was a kid. And afterwards, um, I got asked, there was a record label in, like, Finland. Finland, um, they asked me, they just asked, I got, they just asked me if you'd be part of a Jason Becker tribute album called The Warmth in the Wilderness. I did, I did, I did my own way too, like I kind of did my own interpretation. And a friend played drums on it. And that's been, then they put it out, that's been great, because you know, tons of great players in there, just like Paul Gilbert, Steve Morris, there's a whole list of people on that. That's it was an incredible thing to be part of that. <laughs>